There are some occupations where if you have a bad day or you get your sums wrong, it'll cause a little bit of irritation and perhaps you'll lose a little bit of money. But if your job is as an architect, you need to get all of the things right all of the time. Because if you don't, people die. And frankly, that's not why you get into this line of work. From a building where office workers got seasick at their desks to a city center tower equipped with a death ray, here are 15 of the biggest architectural fails in the world. Number 15. Deadly Earthquake Topples Poorly Designed Building in Taiwan Sometimes a massive fail is so catastrophic, there's nothing that's funny to say about it. And when in 2018 an earthquake that measured a magnitude of 6.4 would hit Taiwan, it toppled four buildings, killing at least 17 people and injuring hundreds. What seemed to have happened was that the quake had severely damaged lower floors of some buildings, causing them to collapse and make the structures above lean to the side as the support underneath would disappear. The trouble with dodgy foundations is that it doesn't even just affect the building itself, especially like this one in a densely populated city in Taiwan. When a building leans over so dangerously, it's in real danger of bringing down other structures nearby. The damage on the surface isn't the only thing you have to think about. When a building shifts in its position, and really, it's not something desirable in a building, it moves the earth around it as well, causing a kind of knock-on effect beyond its own footprint. I mean, if this building falls, it's likely going to take out at least the one that it crashes into, but will also do unseen damage to the foundations of others. When an earthquake strikes, it's sometimes beyond anything that people can control. Tragic natural disasters do happen, but sometimes people have ways to limit the worst of outcomes. In a place where earthquakes are common, engineering can be the only thing protecting us all from the fiercest forces that nature can throw at us. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Basmani Market Now you may have heard that winter in Moscow is fairly chilly and that the city spends up to six months of the year under snow and ice as a daily thing to deal with. So it shouldn't really shock anyone to say that snow is going to likely sit on the rooftops a bigger part of the winter. 66 people died and a further 33 would sustain injuries when the entire roof of Basmani Market in Moscow would collapse early one morning in February of 2006. The victims of this tragedy were mainly migrant workers from Azerbaijan and other nearby countries who worked and lived in the market. If the incident had happened a little bit later in the day, the death toll would have been much larger as the market would have been open and bustling with shoppers. However, it looks as though the disaster could have actually been prevented if people had paid a little bit more attention and noticed that the 30-year-old building was looking a little bit worse for wear. Investigations that followed the tragedy concluded that it was the accumulation of a whole bunch of years of poor maintenance combined with the weight of the snow on the roof that had caused the collapse, and frankly, it's just a terrible thing. Number 13. John Hancock Tower when it was all said and done, the architect who was responsible for the John Hancock Tower in Boston, Massachusetts must have felt a little bit sheepish, because when it got windy, it was necessary to close blocks around the building as it was most famous for suffering from falling windows. This is a rare but dangerous affliction, and aptly named, because a gust of wind could shake loose a pane of glass and send it heading alarmingly down towards Earth. And just take a look at that building. It's mainly windows, and was actually constructed from 10,344 panes of glass. The thing is though, there was no way to know which ones were likely to break free. As if random falling windows isn't bad enough, the Hancock also suffered from being particularly wobbly up on the building's higher floors. 
Many occupants would complain of motion sickness as a result of the swaying. All of these problems would be eventually solved. The windows all had to be replaced with tempered glass and adjusted to allow them to flex a little bit rather than to crack as they had before. And engineers were able to employ a fix in the building's sway as well. They used a clever trick called tuned mass dampener to counteract the motion of the building. Amazingly, the Hancock is now considered one of the world's safest skyscrapers. Number 12. Kimber Arena, Kansas City in a series of events that's nothing short of an Alanis Morissette level of irony, the Kimber Arena in Kansas City played host to an architect's convention on a Sunday where they all admired the building's design. However, by Monday at tea time, the same building no longer had a roof. In fact, the architect who was responsible for the much praised arena was actually there at the convention, receiving an award for the design in the very room that would be minus a roof the next day. Honestly, you can't even make this stuff up in the movies. A storm that resulted in several inches of rainfall in a short space of time would cause the roof to collapse. Now I don't know, but in an area that sees a fair few tornadoes as well as regular old storms, the design of a roof to withstand a, even a little bit of rain might have been a priority. But then again, architecture isn't always the most practical or sensible discipline it seems. Incredibly, given the scale of the collapse, nobody was injured in this particular architectural fail. So that's a relief. Number 11. De La Concorde Overpass in Canada The overpass on the Boulevard De La Concorde in an area just outside of Montreal in Quebec, Canada, as my social studies teacher in high school would pronounce it, suddenly collapsed one Saturday in September of 2006. The complete disintegration of the section of highway happened very rapidly. There had been reports of problems in the days and hours leading up to the incident because people had noticed that the road's integrity seemed to be failing. Now, I'm not an expert at making roads, but if it looks like your overpass has got some giant holes in it and people have complained that they can actually see through them, it might be time to take a look. The massive cave-in caused the untimely death of those unfortunate souls who were traveling in vehicles below as the overpass crashed down and crushed their cars, as well as many other people who fell with the section as it broke off. Investigations following the tragedy concluded that the incident was caused by several different issues, all converging into one thing to make a terrible mess. When the De La Concorde overpass had been designed and built in the early 1970s, it was estimated that it should last around 70 years. But it barely made it halfway. But back then, there was nowhere near the amount of traffic or the same level of road use that the overpass ended up carrying, and it seems as though it just literally wore out. Number 10. Lotus Riverside This crazy site looks like when you're building Legos and you don't get a solid enough base. We've all been there. You know how it goes. It happened to me last week. But really, you do expect that people building with life-size bricks and real people's houses might have a little bit more clue about the way that engineering works, or at least you'd hope so. This 15-story apartment building at Lotus Riverside in Shanghai, China was mercifully not yet inhabited when it tipped over. One construction worker, however, would be killed, but it's incredible that that was the only fatality in this seriously big blunder. The whole building toppled over in one piece, looking much like a giant came along and just shoved it down. Windows and balconies all remained intact as the whole building tipped itself completely horizontal. Invest Investigations following the incident discovered that excavations for a nearby underground car park had caused an imbalance in the foundation, placing it under too much pressure, causing the whole thing to simply give way. The speed of the construction on some building sites in China is often blamed for the lack of quality control in the building industry, and in this case, there was no covering up the blunder, unless you've got a really incredible sales team who can convince purchasers that their apartments are meant to be on their sides. It is really the latest fad in architecture, isn't it? Number 9. Tacoma Narrows Bridge The collapse of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge is legendary. 
This incredible footage from 1940 shows the amazing scene of the bridge blowing in the wind like laundry drying on a wash line. It has since become an example of how not to build a bridge. When architects developed the designs for the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, they originally intended for the structure to be supported by some massive strong trusses in order to reduce any kind of potential swaying. But the powers that be then decided that these would be too costly, so they settled on a much less sturdy system of girders. A cheaper and more elegant design. But engineering usually needs to be based on laws of physics rather than beauty. Even during construction, the bridge's problems were obvious. Workers who built the bridge gave the structure the nickname Galloping Gertie. On the account of the tendency of the bridge to move around alarmingly during windy weather, it was, in the end, the wind that would do it in. The persistent weather conditions created a kind of vortex which caused the structure to twist and flap in a manner that nobody really wants to see in a bridge, especially when they're driving over it. Number 8. Ronan Point the Social Housing Tower block in Newham, East London in the UK was built during the 1960s as part of the post-war rebuilding scheme that was aimed to address Britain's chronic housing shortage. Sadly, as governments still seem to be proving to this day, when it comes to social housing, the standards are not always the highest to give residents the safety they deserve. Modern-day government's negligence would result in a catastrophic loss of life in the Greenfell Tower fire of 2017, which is now on record as being the worst disaster in social housing. But before that, there was Ronan Point. It was May the 16th of 1968 when a woman by the name of Ivy Hodges put her kettle on for an early morning cup of tea. This would set off a gas explosion caused by a faulty connection in her cooker, which then blew out the walls of her home and triggered a devastating progressive collapse of the corner of the whole entire building. This took down floor after floor of kitchens in the 22-story tower block, and it was only the early hour of the day at 5.45 a.m. that would prevent more than the four recorded fatalities, as most people were still asleep and had not yet ventured into their kitchens. Absurdly, the Ronan Point building was brand new. Many of the tenants had only been in their new homes for a couple of months. The disaster showed that although on this particular occasion it was a gas explosion, the flaws in the building's design could have caused a collapse at any moment. Even just a strong gust of wind could have brought it down. The Ronan Point disaster would lead to inquiries into the regulations of social housing and higher standards being introduced, but as we all know, these places are often neglected by the government, and the lives of their residents are put at risk daily, all just to save a few pennies. Making a cup of tea shouldn't be such a deadly activity, now should it? Number 7. Aeon Center in the center of Chicago is a building that was designed to make a massive statement. The Aon Center, also known as the Standard Oil Company or Big Stan, is one of the city's tallest skyscrapers. At 83 stories tall, it would be completed in 1972, much to great acclaim. An architectural pioneer, Big Stan was revolutionary in the 1970s. Featuring a steel skeleton made the building extremely strong and able to withstand high winds and pressures that are unique to such tall buildings. However, the building's architects wanted the massive skyscraper to also look awesome, so they settled on the idea of using marble cladding. 43,000 panels of the stone to be precise. That would make the structure stand out amongst Chicago's famous skyline. Well, as beautiful as marble looks, and it really does, it gleams like the buildings of ancient Rome, it's also fairly heavy. Within the first decade of Big Stan, it was discovered that all the marble panels on the building were failing, crashed to the ground at any time. Pretty dangerous situation for anyone who happened to be wandering below. That's when they realized what a time bomb the building had become, and the owners had to act fast. A temporary solution of straps to hold up the wonky slabs in place would be followed up by a massive challenge to replace every one of the 43,000 pieces of marble with granite. It seems insane, but they did actually do it, and they didn't even have to close the building down while they did. Number 6. St. Francis Dam 
Make all the damn jokes you want, but getting a steady water supply to Los Angeles has never been a laughing matter. During the massive growth of the early part of the 20th century, it was a huge problem. Water was needed, and it was needed fast. So then in comes William Mulholland, chief engineer and general bigwig in the LA County Water Works that had been in charge of the largely successful aqueduct that had brought water to the city from the previous decade. Mulholland was to oversee the plans for the St. Francis Dam, which would create a reservoir outside of Los Angeles. The dam would then be completed in 1926 in San Francisco Canyon. Right from the beginning, there were problems. Before the thing was even full, cracks and leaks were apparent, but budget was tight and time was short, so Mulholland wasn't averse to cutting the odd corner. As you already know, a cut corner in engineering can be a lethal thing. And in this case, it was. Despite Mulholland declaring the St. Francis Dam safe, at around midnight on March 12th of 1928, the thing collapsed. Billions of gallons of water flooded down the valley, and a tidal wave of 140 feet high washed away towns, destroyed homes, over a thousand in all, and killed hundreds upon hundreds of people. And Mulholland? Well, as a bigwig, he was of course clear of any charges, but his career was over. So even now, his name graces the famous streets and structures throughout Los Angeles County. Number 5. The South Fork Dam It's just one dam failure after another around here. The South Fork Dam was built east of Johnstown, Pennsylvania in 1852 and was sold to a developer in 1879 and then turned into a retreat for the wealthy elite. A group behind the South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club made some especially questionable modifications to the dam, and these quote-unquote renovations intended to make the dam serve as a leisure pursuit of rich club members. But it was completely disregarded of the actual function of the dam, and this left many significant safety features in disrepair or even removed altogether. It was during this period that the catastrophic failure would take place. A storm in May of 1889 had raised the water levels on the lake to dangerously high position. There were many warning signs that the dam was close to failing, and messages would be sent as a warning to Johnstown of the impending danger. The messages were then disregarded, and no action was taken. And when the dam eventually breached on May 31st, it spilled 20 million tons of water into the valley in a giant destructive wave. The water gathered speed, debris, buildings, animals, and really anything else that got in its way, and this caused a blockage on its path of carnage, which, when it came unstuck again, created another huge wave, a double whammy of destruction. In the utter chaos that became known as the Johnstown Flood, 2,209 people would lose their lives and tens of thousands of homes would be destroyed. All so that some rich dudes could make their fishing lake a little more pretty. Number 4. The I-35 West Bridge on August 1st of 2007, at the peak of rush hour, traffic was just inching along through construction works on Interstate 35 West Bridge over the Mississippi River in Minneapolis. The bridge was fully loaded with vehicles and trucks, when suddenly, without any warning, the bridge collapsed into the river below, along with 111 vehicles killing 13 people and injuring 145 others. This is not the plot of a Final Destination movie. It's the deadly result of crumbling infrastructure and poor maintenance standards. The scariest part of all this tragedy is perhaps that the investigation stated that immediately prior to the collapse, the bridge was actually still considered within acceptable limits for wear and tear and was only due for replacement in the year 2020. The official line on the cause of the collapse was that it was due to design error, but the tragedy resulted in a nationwide realization that the country's infrastructure was in pretty bad state of repair and there may be other time bomb bridges out there. Number 3. The Hyatt Regency Walkway Collapse In 1981, 
an overlooked design flaw in two motel walkways ended in the tragic death of 114 people. This disaster is now studied as one of the worst structural collapses in United States history and many lessons have been learned. Much like the general assumption that safety guidance has been followed when you're driving a car or flying in a plane, we all live under an unspoken acceptance that the buildings and structures that we use every day are not going to suddenly crash down around our ears. And that is what the unfortunate people at the Hyatt Regency Hotel in Kansas City no doubt believed when they attended an event in the lobby atrium in 1981. Unfortunately for them, a last-minute adjustment to the engineer's designs for the second and fourth floor suspended walkways had one massive error that nobody noticed until it was too late. By moving the bolts that held the walkways together, the construction no longer balanced the weight of each walkway, but placed double the amount of force on the joints. On the evening of this particular event, the walkways were especially loaded with people, and overloaded joints well, they simply give way, and that caused a whole connected system to collapse into the lobby. An assumption made by builders, and a failure to double-check the designs would lead to the shocking deaths of scores of people, and this tragedy literally changed the face of engineering forever. Number 2. Skyscraper can melt cars and set buildings on fire. A building which accidentally becomes a death ray when the sun shines? Although it famously rains in London all the time, of course, when the sun does peek out from behind a cloud, there's actually a skyscraper waiting to turn those rays into a weapon. The building, known as the Walkie Talkie on account of its shape, is covered with glass that's positioned in such a way that it magnifies the sun's rays and literally sets things on fire. You know, like a magnifying glass does to an ant. Local shopkeepers had been complaining that front doors had begun to smolder and that their carpets had literally been catching on fire because of the obnoxious building's antisocial habit. But when some fancy posh bloke would park his Jaguar opposite, returning an hour later to a melted exterior, that's when it hit the headlines. You can't go around melting fancy cars now. Anyway, the result of all these shenanigans was that the City of London Corporation had to fix the building's solar glare problem by putting up an awning in order to protect the streets below. The architect said that he didn't realize it was going to be so hot, but I guess he had heard that thing about rain in London as well. Number 1. The Leaning Tower of Pisa the most famous architectural fail of all time is also one of the world's biggest tourist attractions. People happily pay $20 just to visit the wonky building, and an average of 5 million people go there every year. The Tour Pendente de Pisa is the most famous of all leaning towers, and basically was built on a particularly squidgy sort of clay mixture that wasn't strong enough to support the weight of the building on top, and so it began to lean to one side. During construction in 1178, when they realized that it was happening, they just simply stopped building it. And it stayed that way, unfinished and lopsided for a hundred years. That's when another engineer would come along with a fancy idea. He wanted to add more floors to the tower, and he thought that he could counteract the lean by making one side of them taller than the other. But guess what? That just made it lean even more. Other bits would then be added on in the 14th century, and it just kept on leaning. Then in 1838, another engineer had a great idea, which, you guessed it, made the tower lean even more. It's kind of like the definition of insanity. You keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. Eventually, everyone just went with the lean and embraced the tower's uniquely jaunty angle. In 1987, the Leaning Tower of Pisa became a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and some special safety features were then added, protecting its wonkiness for future generations to come. Well, I've been out walking around and just trusting that things aren't going to start randomly dropping off of buildings, but I'll never look at another structure again without a healthy dose of fear. How about you? Too scared to go downtown now? Let me know all about it in the comments below. Also check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now, and I'll see you next time.